Hi everyone. It's late again. And I'm really rather tired, which is the way you you get. It's the way I get. After I had a lot of very good sex. But still there is something that um, has come up recently that I would like to talk about and I think this is a good way of doing so. Um, I am currently at the Returning which is a new exhibit of I don't know if you can call it an exhibit. It's a, a region made by the Linden by slash for the Linden Endowment of the Arts. It's at this. The region is called Lea 17 L E A 1 7. Uh, the the returning by Marcus Inkpen, and it's um, a very very nicely made region that has at its core. Um, can you see it from here? Yes. Uh, damn it. Still needs to res, I guess. Some little palace thing back here. Mm -hmm. I need to get a little closer and lots of forest around. As you can see, I am very laggy, extremely laggy. I'm, let, let me pull this up. I'm, ooh, man, I just, where am I? It's not clear. Oh, I don't even know how that happened. Huh. Earlier when I was here, uh, you couldn't fly in this sim. Now I can't for some reason. That is weird. Anyway. Um. Ooh. I'm. Let me, let me pull in my statistics window. You can, if you don't know, you can access the Second Life statistics by. Um, pressing Control Shift and one on a Windows PC, Command Alt, you know, Command Shift and one on a Mac. And um, I usually keep that window open at all times. A little smaller than this here. Uh, I can't even resize it. But the important statistics are at the top, um, where you can see FPS, which is frames per second. Um, I once wrote an article on OpenSim Creations about lag. I'll link to that underneath the post. Um, in which I gave some estimate. I uh, roughly said everything above 10 frames per second up until 20 frames per second is everything above 20 frames per second is super smooth for Second Life. Anything between 10 and 20 is kind of acceptable. You will see that it moves slow, it's choppy and laggy. It's what we generally can you know, see as laggy. And everything below 10 frames per second is just is just no not fun anymore. I'm currently at 1.1 frames per second. Of course, I've got my draw distance pulled up all the way and uh, and got the graphic settings set to ultra. But the, I I like to have my graphics pretty high up um, because I I want to to see Second Live in all its glory. I think Second Live, I think the viewer, the, the way the world is rendered is fucking beautiful. And I don't want to miss out on that. I, I want to see the water reflections, I want to see the shadows, I want to see directional lighting, all of these things. I probably don't need to have my draw distance all that way up. So let me turn that down to 
something around, I don't know, a hundred meters. There we go. Um, and let's see if I can move. Um, but what I want to talk to talk about is actually exactly this. This is um, lag and why it runs like this. Because um, the thing that came up is that Cloud Party now offers uh, islands for sale. And the way they work is that you can get a private or a deluxe island. The private island is uh, $14.95 per month. The deluxe one is $99.95 per month. And the difference is that they are bigger. Deluxe island is um, 25 times as big as the private one. Is that right? Um, I don't want to. I'm too tired to calculate that. Anyway, the private one is 100 meters by 100 meters. The deluxe one is 500 meters by 500 meters. And people in Second Life were going like, "Woo, that is cool!" Because the standard Second Life region is 256 by 256 meters. So the deluxe sounds like it's much bigger, which it, I mean it is much bigger. Um, four times as big as the Second Life region would be. Um, two things about this. One thing is that we don't exactly know if the meter in Second Life is the same meter in Cloud Party because meters aren't really 3D program programming guidelines. Um, a meter in Second Life can feel much bigger if your avatar is very small and your house is very small. So, I don't know how that relates to Cloud Party. Are the avatars there really sized realistically so that a meter is a meter? Because really, the, the way the size of, of the, the avatar is your measurement. It is what determines how big or small the world feels to you. So, um, depending on how big or small that world is, I think I crashed. Uh, how big or small that avatar is, you might feel that Cloud Party actually does not compare. Uh, or feel that much bigger, or actually feels much bigger than s than the Second Life region. But I don't think size is much of a problem. Because, uh, as they say, size is relative, right? The problem is that the size is not the only limitation. In Second Life you have the land impact limit, which is kind of a mystery in how it's cal calculated right now. It used to be that, that you had a prim limit, which was pretty simple, but not entirely precise and not entirely fair. Uh, in Cloud Party, you have some measurement that is absolutely fair. You have the, the total objects and the dynamic objects. I don't know how they really... what, what, what classifies... what counts as one object. Because you can make a, like if you take a 3D scene like this one here, it could very well be that you make a, a 3D model in which the whole palace is just one object, right? Or it can you can you can make it into lots of different models, different objects, where like a pillar is an object and the wall is an object and a piece of ceiling is one or a, a window, a dome, as a single object. So it's not clear if there is a limit on how complex an, an object in Cloud Party can be. Um, but that again is also not the problem. The problem is with 
the number of triangles. Because triangles are fixed. There is no discussion about what a triangle is and what not. Let me show you. Triangles are what, or you might encounter the term polygon, it's the same. Um, what a 3D scene is consists of. If you turn on wireframe mode in Second Live, it's um, Control Shift R or Command Shift R on a Mac again. You will see that the whole world is made up of little lines which form, not accidentally, triangles. Let's move to a very simple model here, this one. This is a spire. And as you can see, the surface mesh, this is what we call a mesh because that's why it looks kind of like a mesh, is made out of triangles. Um, and this number of triangles is limited to 300,000 for a private region, private island, and a million for a deluxe one. Now that sounds like a lot. Um, and a lot of people in the second life seem to not know how to really um, compare this number to second life. So let me show you an easy way to to do that. Um, if you pull up the statistics, let me see, there we go. In the second life statistics window you have and a section is called advanced in which you have the topmost statistic which says Catris drawn per frame and uh, below that Catris drawn per second. Catris is short for K triangles or a thousand triangles. Um, as you can see currently in this scene and, and it, the, the Catris drawn per frame means that the amount of basically the amount of uh, triangles that are in your current screen. It's not exactly just your current screen, a little bit over the edges, um, left, right, top or bottom, but all in all it is an estimate on how many triangles the scene you are currently seeing consists of. It, I've got a feeling that it's not just what you currently are seeing, but also the surfaces that you can't see because they are blocked by other surfaces that are in front of them. For example, that if you if you take that pillar, let's, uh, let's take a landmark, that pillar in the background, uh, it, blo it blocks out some part of the trees behind it. And so you don't really see those trees, but the viewer will still have to render the trees. Um, and so th the, the polygons that are blocked by the pillar are still counting towards the total polygon count um, in your frame, in your, in your current scene, in your current uh, window. And that is a good estimate at how many polygons there are, like in this region. And if you do the quick math, this is, th this is what you can see right here is 13, almost 14 million polygons. If we zoom further out so that we would be able to see the whole region, which we can't actually because my draw distance isn't as high as I would like it to, because that would just crawl as down to, as slow as down to a crawl. Let me see how far I can crank it. Whoop. Uh, you see the polygon count just rise and rise and rise and rise and rise. Earlier I was testing it with Ellie and we got to, uh, I think, 24 million polys. And that is really an awful lot, especially if you keep in mind that in Cloud Party you are limited to one million triangles per region, per 
deluxe island, you know, the private islands, 300,000. Um, now, there is, again, not an easy comparison, because the, the biggest part of the polygon count in this scene is because of the trees. The trees are made are all made of sculpted sculpted prims. And um sculptees are highly inefficient when it comes to 3D modeling. They're nice to to make and I love them. Uh and in the hands of an experienced creator they can do wonders. But um they are not very efficient. So if you create mesh objects, you will probably be able to save up to 90% of the of the polygons in this scene. Which sounds a lot, but it would mean we're still at 2 million polys at least. Which is, you know, a million too much for Cloud Party. Um, if this were a little bit more efficient build, efficiently built, maybe we can get it down to a million. I, I doubt it, but maybe it could be done. But then if you've been to the sim, there's really not a lot going on here. There is this beautiful palace with books inside. Then there's another little kind of hidden temple thing with a nice display of uh, simulated uh, reflections on a ball surface inside. And then there's lots of trees, just repetitive trees, 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 and a nice landscape, some bridges, water. But all in all, this is not packed with furniture or vendors or anything. It's just landscape and some architectural structure. I think the polygon count in in in, in Cloud Party will turn out to be very limiting. You could make nice things with a million polys. I doubt that you can make it look as good as Second Life. Second Life, if you look at it, it is absolutely stunningly beautiful. It is the most beautiful virtual world there is today. The only one I can think of that could come kind of close, but it isn't absolutely different setting is EVE Online where you have very very beautiful space scenery and very beautiful models of starships and things which is really not something you can simulate good in Second Life so it's a different demographic it's also beautiful in its own right though um, it will require us to really think, rethink of, because, I mean, you know, as you see, the polys do count in Second Life. I, I mean, the fact that this viewer is running at rendering 20 million polys is amazing in and of itself. And um, if, if it were built more efficiently, the experience would, would be much smoother and I could actually walk around with my graphics cranked up like this. Um, so this is another reason why I don't think that's, that Cloud Party will rival Second Life in, in any way. Because Second Life will always look more beautiful. Um, keep in mind that the uh, triangle... Now, I don't know if this is a problem with the WebGL um, um, system that Cloud Party runs on. It is probable because it has to run in a browser and thus can be limiting in and of itself um, towards the amount of, of triangles it can, it can res, it can display. Um, it may, might also be that the limit is um, not so much a technical limit uh, as it is more of a social limit because they want to have Cloud Party run smoothly on a lot of 
substandard hardware where um, s as far as, as oh we have uh, <laughs> did you notice that we were up to 30 th 30 million uh, triangles there for a moment um, substandard hardware as, as far as uh, 3d rendering is concerned a lot of people on on Facebook that um, cloud party wants to cater to a lot of people in the web in general the cloud party wants to cater to probably don't have a computer that is necessary to render rich 3d environments with a lot of polys like second life does so i think maybe that limit is more superimposed to um make the world more widely uh enjoyable to a lot of users with a lot of different computers i do happen to run second life on a on a reasonably good computer um mainly because i really want to enjoy the world as it is in all its glory i can while we are talking technical and all the, f the the people who are usually come in here to just watch the pretty pictures are already f gone and and don't watch it anymore let's talk to the two nerds who are still watching um i can show you another example of how to assess uh polygons and um how to 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 really get an, a, a feeling for how to build efficiently polygon wise um if you use the impedance viewer um which is outdated i know it's it's old and hasn't been updated in a while and uh, is still running on viewer one uh on a viewer one base but it has some nice features in built in that i haven't seen um maybe maybe other viewers have it and i don't just don't know about it that is also possible but i just um know of, of this feature that I really like in Impedance, which is that if you inspect a an object, let's say I'm on uh, it's gonna res first. Uh, let's say I want to inspect this little seat here. <coughs> Actually, what happened to the inspect uh, thing anyway? I I can't find it in any viewer three viewer anymore used to that you could right click an object and then select inspect and it would show you <coughs> of all the prims the object consists of the owner and last owner and creator and impedance actually gives you some more s uh, statistics it's it tells you the number of faces and the number of vertices which is very important and now vertices are not the same as triangles but they are related vertices are the points which make up a triangle a triangle has apparently that's why it's called a triangle has three uh corners three points and um the vertices are these points the vertices say tell the viewer where in in a simulated 3d space the the endings of a triangle are now you can't just go and 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 divide the number of vertices by three and then get the polygon count that's it, it would be good if, if that were like that but if you look at um the wireframe it's easy to understand why this doesn't work because um uh, where can I get a good view at uh, just a selected number of there okay let me adjust this there we go um, you should see in the center of the screen there is a um, square which consists of two triangles um, the whole thing has two triangles two polygons and consists of four vertices because the two triangles share two vertices 
So, um, and since the world is built out of interconnected triangles, it's kind of hard to get a good picture of the relationship between the triangles and the vertices. You would have to... I usually say that the amount of polygons is about the same as the amount of triangles. It's a little less, but usually not much. Um, you can still go to your statistics and uh, get the assessment of the of the again the triangles drawn. Um, but the inspect menu is nice because it it, it gives you a, a, a per prim basis on how many vertices a prim has, and that is in fact um, a good way to show you how efficient the individual prim is because um, if you take a random sculpted prim for example let me show you these waves here that I made are sculpted did just one sculpted prim um, inspecting that turns it into 1089 vertices which is, um, as a rough estimate, you can you can assume that every sculpt has about a thousand vertices, um, and that is almost double the prims of the most complex regular prim, and which is a torus, and usually about four times as much as any other prim. Um, it's it's building only using only sculptees is very inefficient unless you use the sculptees in a way that no surface really has more vertices than they need to, which is really really hard to do with sculptees. Um, but building with meshes is can if you do it right can be much more efficient than building with anything else including um, prims which is why it's so important for Second Life and why it's so important for Cloud Party as well it's also harder to do um, which is kind of why I think we need to strike a balance between the prim builders and the mesh builders because I don't actually want a society where only the elite can create stuff in world and the people who think that blender or maya is out of their range of possibilities just never give it a try i would like to have a society where all kinds of people build all kinds of things uh, no matter some of them will not be as as good as others but i guess that's not as important as having a large variety of of things, um, which is why I think Cloud Party has a lot of challenges due to its own nature that will be very hard to overcome. Um, I guess the point of this little rant is that um, understanding meshes and the limits of meshes is key to efficient building and is also key to understand of the possibilities and the the range of possibilities of the individual virtual worlds. I think Second Life and OpenSim based worlds have a lot more possibilities than Cloud Party or, dare I say it, um, let's say a browser, any browser-driven virtual world could have. I may be proven wrong, maybe there are sec secret codes of awesomeness that will make browser run virtual worlds run smoother than Second Life. I don't know. And right now, 
Second Life and OpenSim look prettier, are more complex and offer more possibilities than any other virtual world I know. I don't think it's going to change in the foreseeable future. That is all I need to say today. Thank you very much. Goodbye.